rise to your feet. I pray in the name of Jesus that as I speak today from the office of the Son of God, not speaking from my, my capacity of fasting and prayer and obedience and holiness, but as a representative of the throne of God on earth, wearing the Son as my sufficiency, for it is written that our qualification comes from God. I speak that what belongs to you that can come only from the throne of grace will look for you and connect you. Yeah. Speak that out of several people sitting in this place today, somebody who came at the invitation of this one, there is somebody here that you were invited and you just came into this place, but there is a question you've been asking. Just one person I'm referring to. Somebody, you are invited, you are, and you are just, just standing here. Strange. There is something you are asking God, and it's very urgent and a burden. I just want to give everyone in this place, hold your hand as if you are, you know, this kind of prayer that I come over to a bongbo. Because I want to give that, that person opportunity to ask God and receive something. Just ask God for something. You know, today is the last day of the first half of this year. So you have opportunity to change the story of your life as you get into the second half. Ask God for something. 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 Father, I'm asking by the sufficiency of your son. Put something in somebody's life that will answer the question. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, we want to say the last thing in this series. We've been talking about dealing with the devourer. In fact, I wanted to make in this assembly, I wanted us to have a serious prayer operation to end the series on dealing with the devourer. But the Holy Spirit spoke to me very unusually in the morning. And I sat down for a long time after prayers. I sat down so that I didn't even have time to sleep again. Because I was awake from the previous day till almost <laughs> 6 a.m. And I needed to catch some sleep to be, to be awake. But because the Holy Spirit interrupted and spoke to me, and I took it seriously and had to listen. So what I'm going to share with you, you know it's not the area I talk about. I'm going to talk to you about openness, Door openers to financial devourer. How you open doors for spiritual devourers. Spiritual devourer. And I discovered something in the word of God that I will share with you at the very last moment of this message. So we may not pray as I intended. It's not a prayer service. We have worship. It's knowledge. It's revelation for your practice, for things to change in your life. We have talked about devourers. Let's look at First Peter, our scripture, our text. Our text. At the end of the service, I will tell you about the prayer belt today, uh, the one of this week. It's very important and we are fasting from tomorrow. We are taking seven days fast from tomorrow, seven days to speak opening. To command the gates to be open as we enter into the seventh month. The seventh number is the number of rest in Genesis. On the seventh day, God rested from all that he had been creating, all his work. So the word, the number seven, number seven in the scripture is the number of rest, of completeness, of completion, of perfection and rest. So in our prayer belts, we are commanding gates to be opened for our overflowing and God reminded me that the mandate to overflow has not changed I was told this year is the year of overflow so you're going to speak the gates to open for your overflowing help overflowing increase overflowing blessing health overflow but everything you are the one it's going to be prophetic so those seven days of covenant fast from tomorrow you come on sunday fasting sunday is a miracle service communion service from 8 a.m just one service 8 a.m to prepare for that day seven days and in our covenant prayer belt 
which is between 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. Anytime you rise as a family member or join us, it becomes family prayer house, a spiritual prayer house in your house, wherever and you connect. We connect in the plan of God and speak open the gates. And I will be praying, I will be fasting and praying for you as usual by the grace of God. You will pray for me because um, it's a time I'm trying to take a, a time for retreat personally to listen to listen as we enter the, the second half of the year. I had talked about doing the impossible every day. And the Holy Spirit told me I need to listen. So I, do, I because I want to get details. I want to get it right. That's why I'm not talking about it. Next Sunday, I will tell you what I hear from God about the month of August into September. So I need, I'm going on a retreat. You pray for me also. So we are using Psalm 24 from verse 7 to 10. Psalm 24 from verse 7 to 10. Psalm 24 from verse 7 to, uh, to 10. To command gates. Command gates. Gates of marriage. The singles is a time to join your faith with others. Men, husbands, wives, fathers, mothers, join your faith and command gates of marriage to be opened in an overflowing level. And that what comes through that gate should not be nightmare. Because when you open your gate, anything can come in. But you have to specify. The, if the scriptures say, lift up your head, O ye gate, and be lifted up, ye everlasting door. And let, so there is a specification, king of glory means, let the one that is glorious, the one who comes through the king of glory, every good and perfect gift that come is from him, from the father of light. Okay, so that's it. We speak gates to be opened. And in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11, we declare, it's going to be prophetic declaration, you speak over yourself, that from now on, that my gates, the gates of my overflowing blessing shall no longer be shut. My gates shall no longer be shut. The gates for my helpers to meet me, the gates for my blessing, my wealth, my opportunities, my job, my marriage, to say that my gates shall no longer be, be shut. So as you declare the gates open, you turn around and say, every open gate of blessing shall no longer be shut. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. That's it for the prayer bells. Shout, hallelujah. Now we go to dealing, a brief revelation about dealing with financial devourers. How do you open doors for financial devourers? Financial devourer, the devil in financial devouring, the devil brings you stagnation fi financially. The devil reduces your size, reduces your financial size. You used to count in hundreds. You begin to count in dozens, in tens. You used to count in millions. And you struggle to count in hundreds. I used to count in billions. And you, so every reduction in size of a finance of somebody who's still alive and active and working is a sign that financial devourers are at work in your life. Because increase is the plan of God. Increase is the plan of God. I don't know if I'm communicating. So if you have been your business suddenly. And um, a young woman that has given testimony recently on a very serious visitation of financial increase. Two weeks ago, I started having very heavy concern concerning her. My spirit was interceding for her. The spirit told me she was under attack. I was so troubled to look for her. They didn't know her name. They didn't have her contact. So I had to reach out to the office of the School of the Holy Spirit. They needed her number. I needed to talk to her. Eventually, when she came yesterday, I, you have been a heavy burden in my spirit. I've been praying for you. What is it that is happening? And she told me something. She told me, oh, fine. I was not permitted. I had issues. Many people I needed to take care of. And I said, okay. So what's going on in your business? And she breathed it out. Says she saw it coming. She told the husband, but the husband did not understand. He did not see it coming. That their finance have been wiped. Very sad. So the burden, the pain I went through for two weeks. And as she talked about this, told her, kneel down, let me bless you. I prayed for her. As she left, the Holy Spirit started talking to me. You see, favor 
The power of God brings you favor. It is wisdom that will preserve the favor. Power opened the door for her. Big breakthrough. Her testimony blessed so many people. Big breakthrough. Open door. Came and changed their lives. I don't know whether to regret. The last time I prayed for her, I blessed her, I prayed for her. I had a word in my spirit to tell her about seed. She's not a member of this church. She's a member of the Ruach community, the School of the Holy Spirit community. I'm making open confession. When it comes to issue of money, seed, all those things, I'm very shy. I'm sure you know it. I'm shy. I'm careful. I've been trained. I was a Catholic priest. I was a Catholic priest. Apart from being a Catholic priest, a Catholic priest everywhere. You said they're asking for money, asking for money. I have never. I, I was taught by God and I've been blessed by God. So I lived a life that I could not ask as a Catholic priest. It's, it's strange, but it's a testimony I can give. Nobody will say I stayed in a place and I was a burden. I was a blessing everywhere I went. I lived a covenant life. It's a testimony I have. And nobody can contradict it. No human being can contradict it. That where I worked, I asked and became a burden anywhere. So, God spoke to my spirit to tell that girl how to maintain that favor. To me, tell her about seed. Periodic seed. Sacrifice. I make confession. I didn't. Because I didn't know how she would take it. She's not a member of my church. She may interpret it like, because God has blessed me, and you're working for sincerely. Now, it's a confession. I have to say it before God. It came to my spirit. The same way that it came to my spirit, I was told, that girl, that woman is under serious attack. Look for her. And I was praying, 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 and looked for her. Looked for her. I didn't know. And now she said, wiped. That she saw it coming. God gave revelation. But wisdom was not available. You see, the reason why we teach, the reason you should take the word of God taught to you very seriously is to give you spiritual wisdom to manage spiritual realities. Open doors can come. Blessings can come. Do you have wisdom to manage? It was wisdom to manage that made Joseph the governor of Egypt. Joseph did not just give revelation. A lot of people have revelation. They don't have wisdom. Joseph interpreted revelation. Was a man of dream. But he said, okay. Oh, Pharaoh. From what I can see. Disaster is coming. Famine is coming. You see it twice. Because it is determined that it will come to pass. So let me tell you what to do. Wisdom. This is how to go about it. So wisdom is about application of knowledge. You know that this is this application of knowledge. An application, management of resources. He said, set up a wise, shrewd, astute manager over the resources of Egypt in the days of abundance. So that when famine comes, there will be no lack. And Pharaoh said, is there a man more astute? If he did not give wisdom, he will, he will interpret revelation and walk away. I don't know where I'm communicating. Wisdom again. A young woman, one of those, and I want to, I'm, pray, I'm praying for her because her spirit has been crushed. The Holy Spirit told her where to go and walk. If she's here, she will hear me. Because when people come and meet me, as you talk to me and leave, the Holy Spirit will start conversation. She's one of the rare children that I have in this place who hears directly from the Holy Spirit. Where she was working, was not paying her well. Great, brilliant, intelligent girl. The Holy Spirit told her, when do you want to, you know, told her to go to a particular place and submit her CV. There was no, it was not a time for that and all of that. She was to go and she went and dropped it. And came back. And the Holy Spirit asked, asked her another day, a few days later in the place of prayer, when do you want to start working in that place? And he said, ah, but they have not called me. The Holy Spirit I said, tell me, when do you want? 
He said, I want it even now. He said, okay, begin to speak. And she started speaking. That day they called her from that place. Can you come? And she went. No interview, nothing. He said, oh, we are happy to work with you. Start. That's all. And she went. Her life changed. Everything was different. Condition, environment. Beautiful. The last time I met her, I said, oh, how are you? What's happening there? He said, I'm no longer there. She's talking about suffering in another place. She said, tell me, what happened? Lack of wisdom. She's intelligent, excellent. She broke principles. What principle did she break? She was there to correct her boss. Newly employed. Intelligent, exposed. Working under people who have authority to recommend, to make reports about her. She's interested, oh, this one is not correct. This one, and it is okay. This one is not correct. This one is not correct. This one is this and all of that. I say, oh, and when they check, they will find out it is actually so. But when it was time to write something about her, they say your work is over. And she's not given opportunity to appeal to any authority. She cannot, she doesn't have access beyond those above her. The only reason she broke the principle of wisdom, when you are under and you are new, except you are asked, there are certain things you don't say. If she is here, she will now understand why she's suffering because I had to ask the Holy Spirit, so why do you give somebody an opportunity? And in a few months, the person goes back to ground zero and is suffering. The Holy Spirit told me, wisdom. As she was leaving, conversation was going on. And these are, prince, these are things we have taught. These are things we didn't learn many years ago that we had to learn in the process. You don't correct your boss except your opinion is needed. Except in grave danger that if this mistake is made, there will be disaster. Then you do like you are serving the person. And with such humility that the person will owe it to you and be grateful to you forever. Don't display your knowledge. It will kill you. Be quiet and careful until the day you have opportunity to show what you have. A basic principle of wisdom. Don't overdo your boss. Don't overdo and outshine the one above you. You will stop shining. Even in ministry, the same thing. Some people will say they were envious of me. They were jealous of my gift and all of that. Sir, you are serving as an underling under a man. Don't, un, don't overdo. Don't out, if you are very gifted and you are working with somebody that is not so gifted, you, have, you cannot exceed him. For as long as you are under and not given your own place, stay under. Just it takes humility to hold it together. You have 20 to say. You, ha, you say it. And the day you are lifted and allowed to fly, you can say 20 and add one. These are basic laws in wisdom. Let's look at the first scripture. Sir, it took me many years to learn this. By the grace of God in seminary and my early days in the Catholic priesthood, I didn't know this. So I misunderstood so many people. And thought many people hated me because I broke this principle. I broke them myself. I was very zealous. Well, if I say very intelligent, it will not be true. But I have something in my mind, in my intellect, by the grace of God. And I am somebody in a hurry with zeal to show. It brought me unnecessary trouble. Nobody taught me. And those who should have taught me, instead of letting me know, they would talk behind not many people love you enough. A lot of people don't care about helping you. They just care to hold things against you. That is why those who work with me, the one thing is that I tell you everything. And I talk all the time until you say I talk too much because I don't want you to make the mistakes that I made. And I, make a, I took a decision in life. What I did not enjoy from others, others will enjoy from me. What I suffered from others, they will not, people will not suffer from me. So I make sure I share knowledge. Let's look at the first scripture in seeing how you foolishly open the door for the devourer. Like in these two cases, devourers have reduced them in size. 
wasted them because they opened doors. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. Say, in the name of Jesus Christ. I, you, I didn't hear you say, in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive wisdom. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15, 16, 17. Young people, please. Do you know, I, I'm sorry, we'll look at that scripture. You see, a lot of students who should make first class in the university, they graduate with pass. Graduates with 2-2. Two, two. Graduate. And everybody will say, not you, not you. People copied from them exceeded. If you go and check, they use their intelligence to break these principles. To make their lecturers feel inferior and not knowing enough. There is no teacher who is comfortable teaching somebody who knows more than him or her. Even a saintly lecturer will feel offended. And if, so, if somebody who is not even godly, who does not know God, the wickedness of the heart will be activated. And the person knows how to destroy you academically. There are many people who have not been able to have their PhD because of these same principles. Wisdom. A lot of fasting and prayer we pray can can be averted by just practice of wisdom. Wisdom. <laughs> wisdom, sir. It came to an age in my life that I value wisdom more than power. And I do. Because the wise person will use the power of the powerful. <laughs> no, I value wisdom more than power. I started off very foolish in life. I am interested in wisdom. Very interesting. So lecturers, one of the most intelligent person on earth right now, and the most intelligent person I've ever met in life, is now a professor of physics, medical physics. I've told you a lot about him. From Afua, here in Ibiono. Professor Andrew Ekweyong, my classmate in the seminary, Catholic priest of Calabar Archdiocese. He's in Crichton University in Nebraska. This guy... Is the greatest mind that I have ever seen. And he's flying. He's teaching space medicine in Creighton University. Doing research on space medicine. Go check on Facebook, Andrew Ekwenyong. Reverend Father is a professor. We were classmates in the seminary. Younger than me by seven years. Never did physics in a university. But moved from the seminary and went and taught physics to undergraduates in Creighton University and was being paid in order to do master's physics. And went there to do doctorate, went to Germany, do postdoctoral, did, went to Oxford. <laughs> and now has gone back to his alma mater to teach. Do you know, this man was writing notes for lecturers to teach a class ahead of us. While in the seminary, he was writing lecture notes for lecturer to teach a class ahead. But this man does not ask questions in class. Me, I don't know anything. Me. <laughs> I know compared to Andrew, sir, I don't know anything. That one I'm, I know now, I'm talking about me. But I make so much noise in class. I'm sorry. So much noise. Any little thing I know, I want everybody to know. I know. Andrew, until a lecturer will ask him, what will happen is that if a lecturer comes and talks nonsense in a class, because we're in a class, it will reach a point in theology, people have studied, have researched, and people know the sources you are using, and knowledge is available. So if you come and talk nonsense, people will know this is nonsense. So somebody will try to rise and ask questions to let you know you need to check your notes and all of that. And I am... <laughs> Andrew will not ask questions, will not say anything, except you ask his opinion. Otherwise, after lectures, he will come and meet you. I will tell you, sorry, Father. Go and check again and tell you sources. I think what you talked about, what, there has been an update. This document, that document, that document. I didn't need to talk about it in class. 
and just go check. And when you go and check and know that he knows, next time you have to consult him before you come to class. Or if you don't consult him before you come to class, in class you are always looking at him and he's not looking at you, he's busy writing note, taking note like anything. Then after something, you ask him, everybody called him Poop. He said, Poop, so what do you think? And he will smile and stand up and take you through. It's because you have asked him. He will take you through the history of it, the story of it, the mystery of it, until the class has been taken over by him. Next time, you don't need to ask him in class. You ask him before class. <laughs> yeah. Absolute, absolute genius. He studied philosophy, but he's studying, he's, he's a professor of physics. Medical physics, space medicine, preparing for how people will have treatment in the space. Wisdom. We call him Pope. He says the last thing. Once he says nobody, will, you don't have anything to say. It's last. He would prepare lecture notes, but you will not know. We knew it because we were close enough to know. Nobody will know. So humble so humble and because of that every lecturer treated him like treasure you will like once you come to the department other lecturers will tell you watch out that class there is a little boy short and small don't talk nonsense see him before you go and he doesn't threaten you sometimes you may ask him your, for your opinion and he does not say anything he will tell you well he's not so sure he needs to study it and later on he will tell me hey, well, I knew it. I didn't want to insult that man. That man doesn't know what he's talking about. Behind all your in one so. Oh, we be you. In one young then so behind. But in front is so wise. Sir, those men were brought up and properly for where they are. We we are managing to help you now. Am I communicating? So we have seen two people who have ex experienced devourers in their finance. For lack of wisdom. Look at this. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 to 17. Therefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus. And your love for all the saints. Do not cease to give thanks for you. Making mention of you in my prayers. What am I praying about verse 17? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. The father of glory. May give to you the spirit of what? Wisdom and what? Revelation in what? The knowledge of God. You can know God, but you don't have wisdom in that knowledge. You can have revelation, but you don't have wisdom in managing the revelation. Some people are interested in letting people know, I see. I saw a vision. I see a dream. I see this. You just want everybody to know you see, you see, you see. You are not the only seer. Ask for wisdom to manage your vision. Everybody has a vision. A lot of people know God. They, they are extraordinary, powerful, but they don't succeed in life because they don't have wisdom. So, wisdom is profitable to direct your path in the, in the way of wisdom. Sir, I pray in the name of Jesus. Will you rise or let me, let me speak over you? I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you receive wisdom. I say, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you receive wisdom. You shall know God and have wisdom in knowing God. You shall walk in revelation and then have wisdom to manage revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. So final, let's see. The spirit of foolishness helps you to open the door for the devourer to devour you financially. And I'll give you practical two, three cases of how many of you here, sitting here, you open the door so that after God brought you increase, after some time, it begins to go down and you struggle, you fast and pray, nothing is responding. I will show you. It means you didn't have wisdom in managing. Number one is spending money on things. To compete with others. <laughs> Lack of wisdom. Money has come into your hand. And say, yes, it's my time, you know. They have been buying this. This is this, this is that, that is that. 
Now it's time for me to show them that I'm not inferior. So you spend the money, God has opened the door of financial favor and you use the money to compete. You buy something to prove to people you belong. If you understand what I'm talking about, can I see your hand? Glory. If you have ever done it, now you know. It opens the door for decrease. Spiritual foolishness. God does not give you increase for competition. God gives you increase for purpose. Not competition. Not to show somebody you are superior. So you see a lot of people who buy phone. God has opened the door for you. You buy a car. You could buy something that just moves you around. But you want to belong. There is a, a brand, a car name that you want to buy, buy it. That means you belong. Belong there. People will hail you. But your money came through favor. God showed you mercy. Opened the door. An increase came. And the next spending, you buy a car. Buy something to compete. I had told them the day I want to buy it, people will come and see. Ufa and Dise. And then to show it all, you do washing. The washing of it. Washing of it is display. The display of your foolishness. This is why, let me tell you, this is why a lot of people after traditional marriage, and wedding, they struggle to eat. This is why a lot of people, after burial, they sell their properties. Find out. Why? They were competing in the burial to outdo the other family who buried their mother. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me that I'm lying. You know friends, you know people who bury people after burial. They spend so much and everybody praise them. But after that, they lost their jobs. Lost their businesses. Lost their properties. And started begging to eat. What actually happened is that because they buried to show off, they, op they used their own hands and resources to open the door for Satan to attack them. Go and check traditional marriage. People spending money that they don't have in order to impress people. Man, some And And your foolish brothers who are unemployed in the village, they are boasting around. If I used to give a good send, I could tongue and now praise God. And you ask me, how do you know? Sir, I don't attend traditional marriages, but I know. <laughs> the Spirit of God gives us insight, sir. By the grace of God. After such, watch out that person. Will struggle for a long time. That people spend years to pay the debt, the loan they took to go and compete. Do you know why in Grace Family, now we have had two sets of weddings without reception. And the world has not fallen. As the world change, nothing. Or you want to clap? Go ahead and clap. Why? Sir, it is spiritual foolishness for you to spend the money you need to take care of a young woman and your life that is just beginning and use it to give people food that they don't need to eat. And to go and rent a house, 700 and something thousand, with decoration, and you sit down there so hungry and tired. <laughs> and by the time you live there, your food, you drink Gary for a long time. Praise <laughs> Sir, I love you, I love you, I love you. Once there is no money, sir. <laughs> oh, Ibo, I love you again, no? Ibo, I am hungry, I am hungry, I am hungry. 
Praise God. <laughs> so in this family, it is now statutory that unless you want to take, you have so much money that for you is not a problem to go and rent a mighty hall. By the grace of God, Goshen is a village and there will be halls of different kind. No, absolutely. Uh, God will bless, uh, is God not going to bless you? God is blessing you so you will be a horse, different horse that for free you just decorate. All you need to do is just to provide the service, whatever it is, and just use it. So this place is meant, that's what this land is big. Oh, God has given us a big land. So we have facilities. Until then, until you need, you, unless you have enough money to go and rent places and do decoration to show off, and if you have enough money, there is no problem. But if you are going to do it because others are putting pressure on you, sir, you have a father in the Lord who is going to fight against those who fight against you. If there are people troubling you, just come and report them to me. I will so trouble them during that wedding celebration. That they will live before the time of reception. No, trust me. Of course, you know when I say I will trouble, you know I can trouble. <laughs> so that one, I don't need to fast and pray to trouble someone. I know how to trouble is my mouth. <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy. Sir, I am here to make things easy. Absolutely. So now we have two sets of wedding. And people wedding. After that, they go take beautiful photograph with their cakes, with a backdrop. Who cares whether that backdrop in the photograph was in Icon Hotel or was in the back door of Goshen? So nobody cares. What matters is what people, oh, picture on for Yayao. That's okay. That's okay. Nobody will ask you, where did you take this photograph? He, was, he said it was a reception. So people are now doing reception. A few people standing with them and cutting cake. So it makes me happy. Because somebody is not owing except they wanted to owe. Sir, who cannot be for traditional marriage is not necessary. It's absolutely unnecessary. Sir, traditional marriage, two families sitting down to talk some customary nonsense. And after that, canopy and all those nonsense. Well, sir, it's not nonsense, but if you don't have money, it's nonsense. So people finish from there and they are so hungry. So hungry. They finish barrier. And for five years, they don't recover. They, re they don't recover. I have had people who came home to, to bury their parents, went back to Lagos, they lost their jobs, lost everything, and relocated to the village. Because they could not accommodate themselves anywhere else. What actually happened? They came to display, to compete with others. They say, until I finish painting that house, until I finish doing this, what are you doing for? What is the painting of house? Having to do with a dead body. If you have money, fine. Why, why do you borrow for that? Do you borrow? Why do you borrow? Why do you borrow? Spending money to impress others so you don't have wisdom. God gives you increase, gives you favor, and you spend the money to impress people. Grace has left you. Once grace left, leaves you, the devil comes to devour. Number two thing that you do to open the door for financial devourer. I hope God is talking to somebody today. The second thing that you do to open the door to financial devourer to reduce your money, waste, destroy your money, is the culture of waste. You, want, you need to eat only one or two cups of Gary or everybody in the house and we make five cups of Gary. And we eat. And what is left over? More than what we have. A lot of people, when increase comes to them, people are appointed into government. People have opportunities and all of that. You just waste. They buy this one, they don't need it. Buy this one, they don't need it. Buy this one, they don't need it. Buy this one. And then they sit down. They, they start here. And from the, by the time they touch, they eat this a little. They lose appetite for this and this and that and that and that. And it's gone. Waste. Please make sure there is no waste. 
God does not sponsor wastes. Once you encourage wastes, financial devourers will enter and you will be reduced. In business, whatever you do, put things in place to make sure there is no waste. And as I'm talking ministers and everybody involved in anything, I'm sure you hear, I talk about this. Let's look at scripture. I'm sorry, we need to settle this. I was told by the Holy Spirit to come and talk to you about this. John chapter 6, verse 11 to 13. John chapter 6, verse 11 to 13. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples. And the disciples, to those sitting down, and likewise of the flesh, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the, fragment, the fragments that remain, so that nothing is Come on, nothing is lost. This is the owner of the universe. The manager of the greatest economy. Nothing is lost. As a father, when supplies begin to come, we give people children food they are not ready to eat. We display and waste those who have appointment, a lot of our politicians and people are appointed into places. When they get into those places, they are obsessed in showing, buying things and wasting. And some of them, one week, one year after leaving office, they are selling all their properties. Find out. I say find out. Before you accuse me of talking too much, find out. People beg people to buy their properties. People beg. And in most cases, because of waste. Waste. Will you rise and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, show me mercy. In any way, foolishness had caused waste. Thereby permitting devourers to eat up my blessing. Say, Lord, show me mercy. In any way, I empowered people around me. My children, those who help me, to do waste around me. Lord, show me mercy. Show me mercy. I shut the gates against the devourer. Lord, rise for my sin. In Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Are you getting revelation? Yes. I told you I sat down for a long time this morning. The Holy Spirit took me, got me to listen and told me this to share with you. Jesus Christ said, let nothing be lost. People had eaten everything. Gathered. I shout all the time. Reverend Yenna will hear me because she listens. This is why I shout all the time. Sometimes I just shout and shout and shout and shout and, and I will tell her my love. I know. you. Know, just, I just want you to put tighter control. Tighter control around people. You, you are too busy with many things. But just make sure people under us do not set us up to. I don't want to answer God. I don't want to answer that question again. I would tell her all the time, please, because people around you, sometimes people around you can kill you. Like I say in my former life, can I tell you? Before I left that ministry house and released people to go, the Holy Spirit gave me instruction. I had to call them everyone and took responsibility and told God please don't hold what happened in this house against them I didn't teach them I didn't help them forgive them and spare me mercy because I had understanding that they would struggle for a long time some of them are still struggling to recover and I don't want to go into that I'm not permitted to talk about it what happened in their place Every day I'm still praying for, I don't want to talk more than that. Waste. People treating God's thing, ministry thing, like it has no value. It has no value. And now if you're uncle, you will now understand why sometimes I get angry with two people in a meeting. I see you, you are not seeing your environment. And you people just treat me like, it's okay for Baba, go get in. you complain about everything. Sir, we don't tell you many things. When things go wrong, God is not coming for you, God is coming for me. So I tell people around me in meeting every day, 
please, you are not responsible. Please be responsible. Please be responsible. Please be. I'm begging all the time. Why? I was told you don't teach your people. God didn't say I wasted your people. So I had to be, I had to be sharing this with the Reverend Ian. Our people should put things in place. Don't joke. Don't joke. Don't say, don't say. Because the day it happens, they will come for us. And I have passed that level. I don't want you to know that level. I don't want you to know that level. Waste. Okay. Not serving or worshipping with your resources. Not serving God. Worshipping with God. Worshipping God with your resources. Open the door for devourers to take your finance. And this one is going to get a little bit serious. Because some of you here, <laughs> you have vowed that you are too wise for your resources to honor God. What I have come to know in church is that those who spend nothing to serve God, they are the ones that when they are given opportunity to manage the funds of the church, they take advantage of it. Those who give, those who spend, they don't take advantage of church funds. They don't have the spirit of entitlement. Those who don't give, they are the ones. Not serving or worshipping with your resources. Let's look at Exodus chapter 23. I'm almost done. My, my friends who came for the child dedication, just be, be patient with me. I hope God is teaching you something. Because I trust God that God is blessing you today. Amen. Can I hear amen? amen? Exodus 23, verse 25 to 26. Exodus 23, verses 25 to 26. So you shall serve the Lord. Another version will say, So you shall worship the Lord, your God, and he will do what? He will bless your bread. See, you serve the Lord, you worship the Lord. How do you serve the Lord? You serve the Lord with what is available to you. You serve the Lord with what you have, who you are, your opportunities, your resources, your abilities, your talents, your giftings. I want to bless God for a young man, Enes. I don't like talking too much and mentioning the name of some of my children. A young man, you know, you know Enes. Enes. <laughs> yeah. Enes. Enes told me something until I came to Grace Family. I didn't know about blessing. God bless me. He bought a land and built a house. He called it Miracle House in a very short time. Very, very short time. And there is no surprise. This man serves with everything. His resources, his time. He can work all night to correct electrical issues. He will spend his money until he can no longer spend before he lets you know. And he will go extra mile to make sure that cost is minimized. He gives. He spends his money. And in a short while, in Grace Family, a very short while, people who have been around, they are still seeing where they used to stay. He's living in his house. One day he told me, Daddy, when I, I, I will call him and thank him and bless him. He said, Daddy, I have not told you that since I came to Grace Family, God has opened doors for me. For the first time in my life, I have been blessed. He made that confession. He moved into his house. Person, I think either early this year or late last year. That it did not take him one year, like a long time to be called a miracle house. So it's a testimony. Testimony. Others are so wise. So wise with their resources. So wise that God is not involved. They see you as somebody whom they have to avoid and the work here is a lie. If there is anything, then it must, they must take from it. It means you are not serving the Lord. You open the door for devourers to come. You shall serve the Lord, worship the Lord with your resources, with your talent, with your giftings, with your abilities. And then the Lord says, I will respond. What will I respond to? He said, I will bless your bread and do what? Bless your water. He said, I will take what? What will I take? The young woman that I talked about, that is said, wiped away, sickness came. Sickness is a devourer. 
Some people, every time they make money, somebody must be sick. And until they spend all the money, sickness will not go. Not sickness that brings death. They say, no, it, it, it is waiting to come back when there is money. It's a devourer. God says, I will take what? Sickness. That means I will take devourer. Because you serve me. Because you worship me. Worship is not singing. Worship is making yourself relevant. Making yourself of honor to God. Lifting his work. Lifting his name. How do you come to the house of God and see things that are not becoming and you are comfortable? I don't understand it. I don't know how God serves. How people serve God. I don't know. Say, I will bless your bread and your water. Some people eat and some people drink. They don't sleep. They don't have peace. They say, I will bless means your food will honor you. you. People have so much sickness that they have food but they don't eat. He say, I will bless your bread. You will eat well and you will drink well. I will take sickness away from the midst of you. He said, no one shall suffer miscarriage. Miscarriage is not just about miscarriage of the womb. Miscarriage of ideas. Business miscarriage. You start something, suddenly it's washed off. Hope is coming and it's gone. He said, I will take it away. No one will, will have it. Why? Because you are serving me. So issues of money, financial servicing in God, financial worshipping in God, that your money serves the interest and the plan of God and the name of God is exalted and glorified. These are things God says will not happen. A burden in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. In this part of the world, sir, a lot of pastors are treated like they are, they are, a bang, a bang, a bang, a bang. Somebody shared a story of a pastor who had a revelation about a family. The husband was about getting into trouble. In a place of prayer, I was uh, trying to call the man to stop it and call the wife. The wife said, Pastor, you know, you yeah. Like, man, you know, in the bang. And the, pe the person ended and went into intercession. The next Sunday, the man came to testify how he de was delivered. So if the pastor had not gone to intercede after taking insults from the wife, the man would have been a dead case. Because God spoke to him. Tell the man not to go for that event. They are planning to destroy him. And let's leave it there. So a lot of people, they think a pastor has to come and do homage to them before they do something then it shows so that they can have a name. Me, 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 go for me, 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 Go for us, don't go mean Peter on your equip and do. Can't get a past on you. Pastor, you know, I'm going to make a new one. Nonsense, making now for bar. So, if you have that kind of mentality and come to this house, sir, I can preach here the next 20 years and this church is like it doesn't bother me. When I was a Catholic priest, I go into a place, I change it before I enter. But now, sir, I'm interested in changing lives. I'm telling you, I just, I, I, my interest, once I change life, the environment will change. That's my strategy. So if you are changed and you are blessed and you don't serve, you are opening the door for devourer. I will keep doing what I'm doing. I will not change. Oh, I am, it's so clear. See what I wear. It's so simple. It doesn't cost me much to make my dress. So my life is so simple. Look at my children, how they dress. Do they look like they, are they have big investment on their dress? No, it's very simple for me. My interest, I know why I am standing there. I invest in that with all my heart and cry when I cannot do what I should do. And I'm greatly excited when I'm able to do it. So there will never be a day anybody will say that I make anything difficult for him to serve God. Or you will say, I am the one. Without me, it was not so. No, I'm praying God to bless you. The day you are blessed, serve God without blessing. Otherwise, something will come and devour it. And there is nothing we can do. Not honoring God financially. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions. He didn't say, he didn't say give the Lord your possession. You can give as an insult. You can give as arrogance. You can give to show off. He said honor the Lord. Honor the Lord means it is a privilege for your possessions. To bless the work of God. It means you don't do it to be known, to be seen. 
I'm not in the business of coming to announce to people what this person has done. So I want God to bless you. So we have learned few spiritual wisdom that are helping us. That are helping us. So if you don't hear me talk about what you do, it's because I don't want to rob you of God telling, telling you to nations, telling you to blessings. In the name of Jesus, you will be greatly lifted. And in the name of Jesus Christ, your blessing will lift people. You will lift your blessings will be mightily exalted in the name of Jesus. And then your blessing will serve God. Say louder, Amen. amen. Honor, be seated. Honor the Lord with your possessions. He did not even say money, possessions. If you have many properties, that should honor the Lord also. If you have many vehicles, that one should honor the Lord also. If you have so much, if you have money at any level, that should honor the Lord. What does it mean to honor? Raise, lift, exalt, glorify. And with the first fruits of all your increase, first fruit, the first that comes, so your bands will be what? Will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow. So in Grace Family, we practice first fruit. Honor God with your possession, with your possession, with your possession. By the grace of God, the possession, the first possession I have as a man, when I left the Cali priest, I didn't have any land. Landed property with my name in it, none. I owned nothing, I just walked away. I served God and walked away. By the grace of God, the former governor raised money and we bought the land, built a big house, millions of money. The Holy Spirit told me, you will not live in that house. So it's a property for the church. Reverend Archibald, oversee that place. And make sure we change the document. It's in your hand. Let's change the document. Forever it belongs to GFCC. So I've honored the Lord with my own first possession. 3,400 and something square uh, kilometer. 3,000 square, I mean square, square meter, sorry, not square kilometer. God have mercy. 3,300 and square, 3,000 and something square meter. And a house that we have built and invested over, over how, how much money has been spent there. Big, big place. God told me, don't live in it. Give it to Grace Family. We can use it for guest house, can use it for school, can use it for anything. It's my first possession. I honor God with it belongs to the church. So that's it. That's it. That's it. So we have to change the document, sir. Let's put a deadline to it. Let's change that document. Change that document from my name so that church can take responsibility and we think about it. Think about it. So Malachi chapter, the last one, the last one, last one, sir. This is last, so after this last, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is last, so I've told you this is last. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Some people started church in this city and they had to pay offering and tithe in rounds. Those at the highest level, they will pay to the lowest level. So church was about money. When economy changed and that was no longer sustainable, they started lying. And now teach people that tithe is an evil. Tithe was given first by Abraham before the law. Our righteousness is traced to Abraham before the law. Abraham is a man of grace in the Old Testament. That's why the scripture talks about our blessing is the blessing of Abraham. So you cannot say tithe is sin and you have bought property over the world with tithe. Sir, return it. Return it to my people and then start preaching your gospel. It then is men's world. Say, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try mine in this. I'm just reading today. Says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it and I will rebuke the devourer. Say, God say, I will do what? Rebuke. So when you honor God with your finance, sir, we don't need only ghost fire concerning your devourer. God says, I am the minister in charge. If the devourer is sickness, say, I will rebuke. If it is miscarriage, he say, I will rebuke. If it is accident, he say, I will rebuke. So there are so many things that God rebukes on behalf of those who honor him with their resources. And they don't know. Because many things you are delivered from, you don't see in dreams. If you see, you will faint. 
God is the one who... So, because you don't know what God does, and so you take it lightly. So, I have been tightened for 33 years by the grace of God. Since 2000 and... No, since 1991 that I met Christ. My sister, Veronica, taught me tight. As I'm talking to you, every cobo that goes to here to maintain, revenue here to maintain the house, she tight from it. That's how we live. If I give her 100 naira now for anything, she would take tight from it. That's how we live. In this church, how we tight. We every, we tight from your offering and your tight. We tight. We tight. We tight. I have been doing that for 33 years. We tight. I was a Catholic priest, but I understood this. I sowed seed. I live by seed. Live by seed. It is God who taught me. Live God who taught me. He said, I will rebuke. Now, see a strange thing that the scripture is saying, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. See a strange thing. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So that, read it. No, no, no. Let's read it. And I will want to go, everyone. Now wait, God is saying that devourer is a he, not an it. First Peter chapter 5, he said the enemy, the adversary, the devil is, devour, is seeking a whom to devour and it's called he. And God says so, God is talking about I will deal with the personality, with the spirit that devours you. So this is the battle of God. That means your financial worship to God in tithe, in offering, in seeds, in possession, in first fruit. These are offerings and worship. How does God administer this? He rebukes he that devours you. This is how he fights battles in the office. I was a Catholic. I end with this story. A woman who was a Catholic in an institution in this place or one of the parastatals. He, she was ahead. A Catholic who does not understand tithing. Somebody was behind, just beneath her, understood tithing. He was a minister, belonged to a church that took tithing very seriously. When an appointment came, they left her who was so qualified and went beneath. The gifts of this man spoke for him and he woke up one day and became the head of the one that was in in front. God speaks on behalf of the one who uh, rise to your feet. I'm done. I told you we will not we will not pray. pray. When last did I teach about money or giving? Can you remember? You cannot remember. The Holy Spirit told me to come and do this. So those who came for the first time, I'm going to GFC said, Reverend Father, don't go so you don't but tired mom you. So you don't but that's why we saw my abuena for go so abuena. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, but it's true. Oh, was it down to call a place? A term on my way, and you're going up winning. And they, they look for pastors to abuse them and insult them because they speak the truth. And there are many pastors who just feel church is about tithe and they lie in order to have it. But by the grace of God, we stand here to speak the truth, not because we are better or righteous, but because this call has been made clear to us. Lift up, I want to speak over my children, every one of you. That have been living in spiritual foolishness. As a result of which the devourer had been given power to steal from you. I ask God for mercy. Amen. Lift up your two hands, just speak. Wherever, whether you are a visitor, a friend, whoever, just lift up your hand. I'm sure God has spoken to you. Just tell God I'm sorry. Show me mercy. In any way that my possession has not honored you, my resources have not honored you, my finances have not honored you. Or in any way that I give in your church, in your house. And I want recognition. I want to be celebrated. I want to be worshipped. And if I give, if I'm not celebrated or worshipped, I feel offended. I say I no longer give. It means it was not God. Whatever it is that God is speaking to you, just ask God for mercy. Just ask God for mercy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent on behalf of anybody walking with me who is wasting. Whether it is equipment technical, media, music, materials, in any case, those even working with us domestically, and we don't know in any way that weight is taking place to open door for devourer. Lord, I repent. I ask for mercy. 
on behalf of families here, lift up a tongue and businesses that are going down because people bought things to compete. People bought things to show off. People who went on marriage, on traditional marriages to outdo the other person. To be the greatest celebration in the family. Uh, to, to show off that they did the greatest celebration and fed more people. And because of that, they came back sick. They came back humiliated and humbled financially. Lord, I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. Those who spend money to just also show their mates that they belong. And they open doors for the devourer. Lord, show mercy. Those who have resources and they spend it on girlfriends and boyfriends. Spend it on, re on betting and everything. But it is an offense for them to tithe or to honor you with substantial offering. And they give you like, they give in your house like they are giving to leper. Thereby empowering devourers to devour them. Lord, I ask you to have mercy. Show mercy in the name of Jesus. Lord, show mercy in the name of Jesus. People who pay, who are married, will pay house rents for young irresponsible women, but cannot honor your name in the church. Those who marry widows unofficially, and they don't even take care of their own wives, and are renting properties and sending people to school to, to maintain their immoral connection. But in your church, they give nothing. They feel it is not their part. They're by opening the door for the devourer. I ask the Lord, show mercy. In any way, somebody is standing here. And this revelation makes meaning. And somebody is asking you for mercy. Lord, I say, have mercy in the name of Jesus. In this house, Lord, I speak recovery. I rebuke today that by the word of God, what used to devour financially, whether it is sickness, whether it is court case, disappointment, it shall no longer come in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we repent and turn to you and begin from today to worship you with our possessions and with our finances, Lord, take the responsibility of rebuking devourers. One who has been spending money to cure diseases once money comes, there must be this is a mother, father, more wife, children must be sick until the money is gone. Lord, I'm asking for one thing. Show mercy. From today, let recovery come. Begin to speak recovery in the name of Jesus Christ. I recover in the name of Jesus. Just speak. In, whether you understand it or not, just speak. Say, in any way I lost, in any way I became small, in any way I became insignificant, Recovery in the name of Jesus. Recovery in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Just speak those words. Say, I recover. I recover lost opportunities by the mercy of God. I recover from the works of the devourer by the mercies of God. I recover from the mouth of the devourer. I recover from the destroyer. I recover from sickness. I recover from losses. I recover in my business. Just speak recovery. Mercy is coming into this house for recovery. Mercy is coming into this house. Mercy is coming into family. Mercy is coming into businesses. Mercy is coming for recovery. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ.